For nearly a century, the idea has captivated engineers and frustrated commuters in equal measure, a direct link between Long Island and Connecticut. Just 20 miles of water separating two shores, yet a journey that can take three hours by car through New York City's congested highways. The Long Island Sound, 90 miles long, a vital estuary and one of the most stubborn barriers to regional connectivity in America. Cross it today and you have two options. Wait for a ferry that can move roughly a thousand vehicles an hour in a pinch, or drive the long way through the Bronx, adding 70 to 120 miles to your trip. But what if you could just build across it? That question has produced decades of proposals, bridges that were never built, tunnels that stayed on paper, and price tags that kept climbing. The latest, a $50 billion bridge unveiled in 2025. Before that, a state commissioned study estimated a tunnel at up to $55 billion. Hey, if you're as fascinated by these massive mega projects as I am, whether they actually get built, the ones that turned into total disasters, or the incredible ones that somehow made it to the finish line, then please hit that subscribe button and stick around. I love diving deep into all of it, and I'd really appreciate having you along for the ride. So here's the real question. After a century of failed attempts, is this finally the moment it gets built? Or is this just another expensive dream destined for the archives? Let's find out. Long Island, counting Brooklyn and Queens, is home to over 8 million people. Narrow it to just Nassau and Suffolk counties and you're still looking at nearly 3 million residents. Either way, it's connected to the mainland by exactly zero bridges or tunnels that don't route through New York City. Every single road connection funnels through either the Frog's Neck Bridge or the Whitestone Bridge, both built decades ago, both chronically congested. Connecticut faces a similar problem from the other direction, Interstate 95 is one of the most congested highways in the country. For anyone traveling between New England and Long Island, there's no direct route. You either take a slow ferry or add hours driving through the city. The numbers tell the story. A trip from Bridgeport, Connecticut to Port Jefferson, Long Island is 20 miles across the water. By car through New York City, over 90 miles, that's not a detour, that's a different journey entirely. And it's not just about convenience. Long Island is hurricane prone. When storms hit, evacuation routes are limited. The ferries can only move about a thousand vehicles per hour even when running full tilt. A fixed crossing could provide a critical lifeline during emergencies. The economic argument is straightforward too. Connecting millions of people across the sound could unlock labor markets, speed up freight, and reduce the strain on New York City's already overburdened bridges. The potential is clear. So why hasn't it been built? This isn't a new idea. In 1938, U.S. Senator Royal Copeland proposed an 18-mile bridge from Orient Point on Long Island to Old Saybrook or Groton in Connecticut. It died with him that same year. The 1950s brought renewed interest. Governor Averell Harriman explored dual bridges, one from Oyster Bay to Rye, another from Orient Point to Rhode Island. Traffic forecasts looked promising, but costs were high and projected usage was low. The idea stalled. Then came the 1960s and Robert Moses. As chair of the Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority, Moses commissioned a study for the Oyster Bay Rye Bridge, six miles long, cable stayed suspension design. Estimated cost $150 million in 1966 dollars, roughly $1.4 billion today. Governor Nelson Rockefeller backed it. But by 1973, environmental lawsuits, cost overruns, and fierce opposition from North Shore communities killed the project. A 1971 state study had evaluated eight potential sites and recommended Oyster Bay Rye, projecting over 4 million Long Island users by 2000. But the conclusion was that ferries would be sufficient. The idea went quiet for decades. Then, in 2008, Long Island developer Vincent Polamini proposed a privately funded tunnel. An immersed tube design, 16 to 18 miles long, with two three-lane tubes plus a maintenance tube. Cost estimate, 12 to 16 billion dollars. Tolls of 25 dollars each way would finance it. Polamini even hired tunneling experts. But the 2008 recession hit and the state never bought in. The proposal faded. In 2016, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced a $5 million feasibility study. The goal, evaluate crossings to Westchester, the Bronx, or Connecticut, fix the Long Island Expressway gridlock, explore options. The study, conducted by WSP USA, was released in December 2017. It analyzed five alignments. Three were quickly dismissed. 
The eastern routes were too long, demand was too low, and seismic risks were a concern. That left two serious options, the western route from Oyster Bay to Rye, and the central route from Kings Park to Bridgeport. For the western route, three configurations were studied, a bridge-only option at $8.5 billion, a bridge-tunnel hybrid at $43.5 billion, and a full tunnel with three tubes and six lanes, estimated between $31.5 billion and $55.4 billion. The central route to Bridgeport had similar options, a bridge at $13 billion, a hybrid at $22.7 billion, a tunnel at $31.2 billion. The study noted that tolls could generate hundreds of millions annually, but even with that revenue, the economics were challenging. The report highlighted potential benefits, reduced travel times, improved freight movement, and a critical evacuation route for Long Island. But in June 2018, Cuomo shelved it. Opposition from Westchester and Nassau County was intense, environmental groups pushed back, and the price tag was staggering. A January 2018 request for private developers drew six responses, but no formal request for proposals ever followed. The $55 billion tunnel estimate became shorthand for the project's audacity. Technically possible, financially daunting, politically toxic. Then, in September 2025, a new proposal emerged. Stephen Shapiro, a developer from Eastern Connecticut, unveiled a $50 billion bridge, 14 miles long, connecting Kings Park on Long Island to Bridgeport, Connecticut. Unlike previous tunnel-heavy plans, Shapiro's design emphasizes a bridge, an upper level for vehicles, with tolls at $39 one way, undercutting the $75 Bridgeport Ferry, a lower level for rail, linking the Long Island Railroad with Metro North for seamless service between New York City and New England. Shapiro scaled the cost from the $4 billion Mario Cuomo Bridge, which spans three miles. He factored in inflation, the added rail component, and the engineering complexity of a 14-mile crossing. His pitch, this is a game changer, cut the Bridgeport to Long Island commute from three hours to 20 minutes, ease congestion on the Long Island Expressway and I-95, provide a vital hurricane evacuation route for nearly 3 million Nassau and Suffolk residents. By October 2025, Shapiro planned to pitch the project to the White House, seeking federal funding. He estimated five years for planning and eight years for construction. Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont responded on October 14, 2025. He called the plan incredibly complicated and supremely expensive, but said he was open to dialogue. Connecticut State Representative Joe Hoxer praised its potential for jobs and economic growth. But here's the reality. No formal studies exist no funding commitments, no engineering assessments. It's a developer-led proposal gaining attention, but it's far from a shovel-ready project. Building across the Long Island Sound is not a simple task. The water is deep, up to 100 feet in some areas. The seabed is soft in places, requiring deep foundations, and the region is seismically active, demanding earthquake-resistant design. A bridge would need to accommodate large vessels. That means high clearances and long spans. Cable stayed or suspension designs would be necessary. Foundations would need to be driven deep into the seabed, potentially over 100 feet below the surface. A tunnel presents different challenges. Tunnel boring machines would need to carve through rock and sediment. Ventilation systems would be critical for safety, and the depth required to avoid ship traffic would add complexity and cost. Then there's the weather. The sound is exposed to nor'easters and hurricanes. Wind speeds can exceed 150 miles per hour. Any structure would need to withstand extreme conditions. The 2017 WSP study noted that a full tunnel could take 10 to 15 years to build. It would require thousands of workers and millions of tons of steel and concrete. The logistics alone are staggering, and that's before considering the environmental impact. The Long Island Sound is home to over a thousand marine and bird species. Dredging and pile driving could disrupt habitats. Conservation groups have warned that construction could reverse decades of ecological progress. Engineering challenges are one thing, political opposition is another. Affluent communities on Long Island's North Shore and Connecticut's Gold Coast have historically resisted these projects. They cite concerns about traffic, pollution, and visual disruption. The not-in-my-backyard sentiment is strong. Environmental groups argue that the ecological cost is too high. The Sound's ecosystem is fragile. Construction could harm fisheries, disrupt wildlife, and damage wetlands. 
Then there's the question of demand. Would enough people use the crossing to justify the cost? The 2017 study projected 74,000 daily users, but critics point out that many drivers might continue using ferries or existing routes through New York City. Funding is perhaps the biggest obstacle. Neither New York nor Connecticut has committed state money. Governor Lamont ruled out Connecticut funding entirely in October 2025. New York has expressed interest but made no financial commitments. The only viable path forward is a public-private partnership. Private investors would build and operate the crossing for 30 to 40 years, recovering costs through tolls, but tolls of $40 to $60 per car would be steep, and there's no guarantee that traffic volumes would support the investment. Nassau County Supervisor Joseph Saladino called the project fiscal irresponsibility in 2018, arguing that funds should go toward repairing deficient bridges and upgrading the MTA instead. So after a century of proposals, studies and debates, will this actually happen? The track record is not encouraging. Every serious attempt since the 1930s has failed. The reasons vary. Cost, opposition, environmental concerns, lack of political will. But the result is always the same. The idea stays on paper. The 2025 bridge proposal is generating buzz. But buzz is not the same as progress. There are no engineering studies, no environmental reviews, no funding commitments. It's a concept, not a plan. Governor Lamont's response was telling. He didn't reject it outright, but he made clear that Connecticut won't be paying for it. Without state support from both sides, the project has no foundation. Federal funding is possible. The bipartisan infrastructure law has allocated billions for major projects. But competition is fierce, and a $50 billion bridge would consume a massive share of available funds. There's also the question of whether this is the right solution. Some transportation experts argue that improving existing infrastructure, expanding ferry service, or investing in rail connections would be more cost-effective. The National Transportation Safety Board's March 2025 report flagged existing bridges in the region for vessel strike vulnerability. That adds urgency to the conversation, but it doesn't necessarily mean a new crossing is the answer. The reality is this, the Long Island Sound crossing has been studied, proposed and debated for nearly 100 years. It's technically feasible, the engineering is possible, but feasibility and reality are not the same thing. The Long Island Sound is 20 miles wide. For a century, that short distance has proven impossible to bridge. The latest proposals, a $50 billion bridge and a $55 billion tunnel, are the most ambitious yet. They promise to transform regional connectivity, ease congestion, and provide a critical evacuation route. But they also face the same obstacles that have killed every previous attempt. Staggering costs, fierce opposition, environmental concerns, and a lack of political will. Stephen Shapiro's 2025 bridge proposal has reignited the conversation. But without formal studies, funding commitments, or state support, it remains just that, a conversation. The question isn't whether it's possible to build across the sound, the question is whether anyone will actually do it. After a century of proposals, the answer remains unclear. What do you think? Will this crossing ever get built, or is it destined to remain a dream? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and if you want more deep dives on mega projects like this, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.